Hello there, it's Alex here, also known as Default Sound, and today I'm bringing you a new LEGO video, and this is something I've been wanting to do for a while, and I saw this back last year, I think it was, um, Nico71, who's another YouTuber, does lots of great LEGO contraptions, and this one caught my eye for some reason last year, and maybe because he made the uh, instructions available, but uh, I quite like the uh, pneumatic pump he made and designed. And uh, because he uh, allowed people to look at the instructions, I thought, let's try and reverse engineer it and build my own. So uh, there were a few parts I didn't have, and I had to order these separately, as I've got here on the desk at the minute. This one in particular is the pneumatic pump, which is the, I can't remember the exact part number, but it's the one where you can use a, the hand pump to pump air into the pneumatic system. And so I had to order another three of those uh, in addition to the one I already had. And I also bought some more pneumatic tubing because this uses quite a lot of pneumatic tubing. And a few more more modern pieces that I don't have many of in my collection. But uh, I went through and I reversed engineered the entire, well I, not reversed engineered technically, but I went through all his pictures he had on his website and uh, one by one figured out how this was built. Now for my own benefit, and the corner you can probably see a side of my laptop, I actually went in Lego Digital Designer and designed the entire thing in there as well. So I'm going to put that in build mode and I'll be able to remember or remind myself how this all goes together and I may bring up his um, pictures as well on his website because there's a few steps I don't remember entirely. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put all the parts out on the desk so you can see everything that's in this model. Okay so we've laid out all the parts as you can see there's not too many unique parts in this build. I do want to point out a few parts that I didn't have many of. Uh, the first one was this Technic frame I'll call it. I don't have many of these and I think I've used all of them in this build. The other part that I substituted was the wheel. Uh, Nico uses a slightly different wheel in his build, but I substituted it for this uh, Lego Mindstorms wheel, if I remember rightly. You also need a few pneumatic parts, like these T, pneumatic T-junctions, and uh, I don't know the name of this part. It kind of gives you a piece where you can connect another bit of tube, and it also has a Technic hole that allows you to put it on a beam. Yeah, you also need a fair few beams. Uh, I've changed the colour scheme of mine, because to match what parts I had. Nico I think went for yellow and red. Mine, I've gone for black and blue uh, just because that's what I had in my collection. And yeah, that's about it. So this is the switchless pneumatic pump. So it uses no pneumatic switches. And uh, once I get to the part where we build the switchless, or well, the switch out of Technic pieces, I'll try and explain how it works. And this is what I think interested me the most about this build is uh, it's got a very interesting a mechanism in it. So yeah, let's um, get started and try and build this. Time-lapse was a bit rubbish, I will make sure the next bit is a little bit better. What I've built is the hand pump. I've just got to put the um, pneumatic pumps into it, because in LEGO Digital Designer they do not have that element. Alright, I've got to take off this arm here, as well as this arm, and I've got a pin ready here and ready... Where is it? There it is. Two pins ready for where the pneumatic pumps are going to go. They weren't too expensive, they are about £2 each. Uh, you have to be careful on BrickLink if you're buying these because there's different model numbers and for some reason some of them are ridiculously expensive. I think if you look and f search carefully you'll find the cheaper part. Oh. That way, I think. And that's going to connect in there. There we go. That looks about right. Is it that way? No, that feels more like that way. Look at that. Got some pumping action there. 
all we have to do is put in the next three. There we go. Look at that. Put two in there. And feel the. There's a lot more uh, tension now. We've got two springs, and I imagine all four are going to get a lot of airflow out of that. Actually, really, I should use a friction pin between them. Maybe I should use a friction pin. Does it matter? It doesn't really matter. I would advise using a friction pin between them here. So between there, I'd probably use a friction pin and at the bottom there. But once you put them together, I don't think it's a huge issue. I think when you have them separated like this, you get twisting. But if you anchor them at this side, you're going to get less twisting. Might be something worth investigating. Okay. Put everything back together. There we go. That's quite a uh, hefty little bit of construction there. And the tension's quite just about perfect. Moving on, we will now build the, well, I guess the switch, the pump itself. So I'll hopefully make sure the time lapse is a little bit better this time. Okay, you may have noticed in the time lapse that building this has been a little bit fiddly. And the main reason for that is Let Go Digital Designer doesn't really give you logical steps to build models that you've designed in the software. So that's why the frame at the minute looks a bit odd and it's got a cantilever piece that's hovering at the minute. So I've ended up going back to Nico's website and just following the pictures. And so far I've built the main arm. So this, this will pump this piston up and down eventually and this is yeah this is the cam uh, piece that will spin up and down to create the motion built this and um, next I will try and figure out where everything else is going onto this frame I've got here um, so far it's looking good not many pieces left to go so yeah all going well we should have a pump very soon And um, I've started going backwards and forwards between Lego Digital Design and Nico's page, and that has helped a lot to figure out how all this goes together. So, what we've got now is this cam motion pulls this piston up and down. So, it's a very interesting uh, take on using the pneumatics, which is probably why I wanted to build this. What I've also done is gone through and started to build the switchless, well, this is the switchless pneumatic part. and. In the next set of steps, I'm going to add in the switch, which is here. And the way this works is quite clever. So in effect, this tube, or a tube like this, will be placed underneath here. And every time this turns, or tilts, it squeezes one side or the other, and causes the valve to open and close. So in effect, it is a, a valve, just made of parts, instead of using this standard switch here. And the reason why he's used this switch is um, on the standard Lego switch there is a point where it's completely closed. So the, this wouldn't work with this switch because by the time the air's pushed this so far it would just seize up because the air's not continuously flowing. Because in effect you want this motion where when it closes itself and then it goes back the other way that it would carry on the motion in either direction. So this sort of switch wouldn't work. About what we want, I 
think. Okay, so we've got this formation here. So what we're going to do is we've got these um, red cylinders as where the well where it's going to get crushed between that T piece and that red cylinder. So this will rotate backwards and forwards and crush the tube. We want that to go through here. That is the formation there. Like that. Maybe this just pushes down on there and then we use our piece with a stop on the end. Try and feed it through. Okay, it's got there. I'm not sure if I've done this correctly. It's a lot of strain here and that's not moving at all. Pretty sure that's supposed to move. I feel like right now that is not moving a lot. Okay, we'll, we'll soon find out whether that works. What's it going there? I think it goes, yeah, it goes in there. Like so. Is we've got this switch here that will go backwards and forwards to let the air out of one end of these tubes here. And then these tubes here will connect to our pneumatic piston there. Okay, let's try and put this together. Okay, so here we have it, Nico 71 switchless pump. I finished building it and um, it sort of works at the minute, as he says. It does work when you have these gears in the correct position and that's what I need to figure out next. I need to do a bit of troubleshooting to try and figure out the position of these gears because that seems to be the most important part in when this should be pressing on the left or the right side to let air, let air out and in depending on whether you want this piston to go up and down. I'm going to troubleshoot these gears and come back to you once I've got it working. Okay after a bit of troubleshooting I've managed to configure the gears in the correct position so now after a little bit of a spin let's go. Well thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the build log, I've certainly enjoyed building it and that's all from me for today and I'll see you next time.